Hey everybody, welcome back to the Podcast Daily. It's another new crew, a line change. It's Bill Landis and Austin Ward today, keeping you off guard, uh, giving you some fresh content and different perspective. And with uh, one day off for us from going in to talk to the Buckeyes during training camp, we're going to focus on the Big Ten and a big deal, uh, a billion uh, dollar deal, it sounds like, as uh, the conference hits this home stretch of removing itself from ESPN and casting its lot with Fox, CBS, and perhaps most intriguing, NBC. So what do we make of it, Bill? It feels pretty monumental, no? Like the the idea that, (laughs) I guess Ohio State first and foremost, but the Big Ten in general no longer playing its games on, on ESPN or ABC feels fairly like mon- monstrous. I like, I, this is like the uh, part, part of me feels like it's the biggest news. Like I, you could possibly kind of process when it comes to college football media rights. But at the same time too, I probably felt the same way when they started putting the games on Fox and like that kind of feels normal now. So I, I guess on one hand, it's, it's the kind of thing that, that will eventually just sort of feel commonplace and we'll know to go to these places to watch Ohio state and, and big 10 games. and won't think anything of it. Maybe, uh, you know, a year or two into that deal. But at the moment, the idea that the ESPN is out of business with the Big Ten like just kind of blows my mind. Yeah, it's uh, you'd spent so long thinking about what's going to be the primetime ABC slash ESPN game. Who gets that spot? It means so much for the league. And then Fox undercut that part of it. And I think almost at that point you could see, well, maybe there's a future that doesn't involve ESPN, which 10, 15, uh, 20 years ago would have been unthinkable with ESPN is, you know, trying to corner the market, but, you know, viewing habits have changed. Uh, Other broadcast deals, other broadcast networks have come and gone that have reshaped this opportunity at the perfect time for the Big Ten to capitalize and cash in in a way that no other league ever has before. You know, the SEC is close. And I just think there's often this reminder that the SEC has the reputation for more people caring about it and that it's more powerful and that it has the better teams. And that's the only place that it, it means more. And then they don't make more because the big 10 does <laughs> like, this is the reminder that the big 10 is the one that has the biggest checks. And that's pretty significant, especially when it comes to not Ohio state specifically, but the rest of the league to try and keep up with what the sec has been able to do with their perhaps recruiting and player advantage financially that's how the big 10 levels the field it is interesting to me that that when the big or excuse me the sec kind of struck its new deal that the big 10 did give up some ground there and i i never really expected that that it wouldn't get back to a place that, that the big 10 would be back in front again but to go about it this way uh is is a little surprising to me and and i i suppose it falls in line with i, I know you had kevin warren on the i guess it was the, the inaugural episode right of, of the <laughs> podcast the first piece of content we ever That's had right. big 10 commissioner kevin warren had a conversation with you but and he must have said the word bold i don't know 115 times during his podium session at, at big 10 media days uh severing ties with espn while still getting the bag is pretty bold <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that was possible. And even on Monday night, um, I thought, well, maybe they've just leaked some details about what NBC and CBS are offering. I I guess primarily the CBS deal. I think we understood that maybe NBC was going to be a factor in this no matter what. A lot of that might be driven by their partnership with Notre Dame. We'll get into that in a minute. But the CBS deal, I thought, maybe they're leaking this amount of money I think it was about $350 million mm-hmm. for the second tier um, game for the Big Ten, which is uh, just a ludicrous amount of money in my mind, But um, which is all of this is really funny money. It doesn't matter uh, if it's $350 million or $35 million, I guess. But uh, that's aside from the point. I thought maybe they're leaking this amount so that ESPN realizes how serious the situation is. This is the amount that they're going to have to beat You'd have to think in historically they would have been able to match that and and come to the table right now before it's too late. I thought that's got to be it. And this is still going to end with Big Ten games on ESPN and ABC and, and Herb Street and Fowler and you know game day coming in. 
I, that's another repercussion that we'll talk about another time. But I just yeah. thought that there's no way that this ends without ESPN involved with Ohio State. Uh, forget the the fact that it's you're actually dealing with conferences, but Ohio State is the number one needle mover in college football and one of the biggest in all of sports. And for ESPN to be out of that game for the team that we cover, that's the part that like that's that's hard to fathom because they've been yeah. to campus so many times for game day, so many big time games. Like they gonna do that anymore? Probably not. I, I would I would think not. And and you know that that idea in and of itself is a little hard to wrap your mind around because. In, in some ways, I almost feel like the 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 setting outside of the shoe on a major college football Saturday has become almost like synonymous with that product for ESPN, <laughs> and it could, it'll still go on, and and I suppose it'll be a fine show. But I, I, maybe you felt some of that slipping a little bit with Fox taking its show on the road a, a, a few times here over the last couple of years as well. Clearly, Fox is trying to encroach in on on that territory, and, and think we'll probably be more aggressive in, in doing so now, but. Yeah, you're right. There, there are two kind of sides to this. It's one. It's it's it's. It feels like the Big Ten was fine not being associated with ESPN. If that's how this shook out, and, and and clearly that is how it's shaking out. But the idea that ESPN itself would not be more aggressive in maintaining that relationship with the conference, but most importantly, the arguably the biggest brand in the sport in Ohio State, while while college football as an entity remains so important to that network. Uh, doesn't really make much sense to me, but I, I suppose they felt like they had enough going with the SEC and especially an SEC that includes Texas and Oklahoma. But I don't know. I, I kind of size up the two leagues in terms of a television product. And, and I don't I don't know if what the SEC is going to put out there is, is necessarily that much better or better at all than, than being able to toss out Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, USC, UCLA. So um, good for the Big Ten. Like, I, honestly, I I. I this is a pretty aggressive move. Like I'm, I'm frankly like a little shocked by it, but, but I think it's, it's in line with what the big 10 or like this new version of the big 10, I guess has, has kind of shown itself to be here over the last few months. It's, it's bold. That's it's right, strategic. Bold. It's innovative. It's powerful. It's, it's buzz strong. Words. It's buzzwords. <laughs> um, but it is very good for the big 10 and very lucrative. Yeah. The, the other question, like, so Burm asked this, don't I, I didn't. My mind didn't go there, but the fact that Burns did suggests to me that a lot of other fans think this way as well. Which is, okay, if ESPN is no longer in business with the Big Ten and still control the broadcast rights to the college football playoff, aren't they going to do everything in their power to keep the Big Ten out and to make them pay? And uh, I thought, well, that's interesting. However, the college football playoff broadcast deal is about to be up as well, and there's going to mm-hmm. be expansion. And I'm not sure that the era of ESPN's influence over those three games is going to ever be the same again once once the powers that be finally come to the realization that this model of four isn't working. Yeah, I, I think eventually it's going to look sort of like the NFL playoffs where uh, what's it, Fox has the NFC and CBS has the has the AFC and then whichever network it is in the cycle gets the Super Bowl that year. And, and maybe ESPN will remain the network that carries the – semifinals or the the national championship game but there's going to be more playoff games beyond that once expansion comes and i would fully expect fox and nbc and cbs or perhaps even one of these streaming platforms to get in on that game as well so so that playing field is going to change but in in the short term while espn still owns everything uh i think they still like money so i think they're okay. probably still going to be pretty eager to have ohio state in the playoff even if ohio state is not a quote-unquote partner uh with espn and abc It'll be nice for ESPN when they get to capitalize on Ohio State without being involved in it, potentially. Although I think the window for that is probably very small, maybe only one season. I, who knows how all that's going to play out. Seems to change every time people talk about the future for that. Uh, that's been the case as well with expansion and the opportunities there. I think the fact that NBC is involved, I don't know if Notre Dame is pushing it. I don't know if NBC is pushing it. I don't know if it's a combination, just a realization that the college football landscape and the amount of money has shifted dramatically and they don't really have any footing to stand on independently anymore. But to me, the fact that NBC is involved, you and I haven't had a chance to really talk about this at this point, you know, dating back to USC and UCLA, but I don't know that I loved the idea of expansion. Certainly not with those teams on the West coast. Now to me, it almost feels like there has to be more. It's inevitable because Notre Dame, they're probably coming. That's yeah, my think so. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, no, no. I, f- I feel the same way. I, it's just 
it's hard for me to imagine that there wasn't some back channeling happening here. Um, and and again, like it's not we're not reporting anything. We're just trying to kind of read tea leaves. Like the the relationship between NBC and Notre Dame is so strong. So that the idea that like NBC would suddenly get in business with the Big Ten without Notre Dame at least being aware of it happening seems a little far fetched to me. And whether or not, like as you said, it's coming from the television side or from the Notre Dame side itself, it does feel like it's just another push for Notre Dame in the direction of, of joining the Big Ten, whenever that might happen. I don't I don't know if that's you know imminent and going to happen here in the next few months. It could be a year or two away, but it's hard for me to fathom that now that this relationship exists with NBC, that that uh, Notre Dame won't soon follow. And and there does you know uh, the Big Ten does need more here in terms of expansion. Now that they've they've I. I I think you bring in Notre Dame, right? Because you have to. It's the thing that makes the most sense, and you be patient with that, and you you know you wait. I guess as, as long as Notre Dame wants you to, within reason, um, they probably <laughs> still need to expand further west as well. I would think the idea there's only two teams out there on an island um, doesn't make much sense to me. And also, too, if you're these new television partners, you probably want another team or two out there because then you can create another television window. You have the, the noon 3.30, the 8 o'clock, and then you can do your, <laughs> I guess it's Big Ten After Dark now. Big Ten of After Dark, baby. Big, Big Ten After Dark uh, <laughs> on Peacock. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it'll be a lot to wrap Ooh. your mind around, but I think that's the direction this is headed. Yeah, my brain just exploded. I, I did realize that was going to have to be one of the outcomes, whether you're talking Stanford, Washington, Oregon, whatever, maybe all of them. Um, as you're trying to fill out you know, everything is viewed through this content prism, even the actual games itself, when you're filling out the broadcast deals. And now you have to have 20 teams so that you can put together four windows and dominate the conversation. Not only that was the buzzword in Indianapolis, coast to coast, but now 24 hours a day or noon <laughs> to 3 a.m. Like you, you have to dominate the conversation and the coast. Can, cannot wait for, I'm trying to think like, what's the, Let's say the Big Ten adds Cal for some reason, and you get that nice like, Ohio State Cal game that kicks off at Berkeley at ten thirty Eastern time. Oh, oh no, oh no! <laughs> Why did you put that into the world? Uh, just I just wanted someone to be miserable with me. <laughs> I was thinking about the amusement of say Rutgers at oh, that's, that's Washington and getting that at ten thirty. That's but a real. You took it one step right further and said that. We were going to have to cover a yeah. game starting at 1030 Eastern. That's right. And I wish you hadn't done that. At yeah. least we know with like USC, Ohio State, you know, the, I guess the other fear was that it would be 9 a.m. Like well, that's definitely talking- going to happen. That's absolutely <laughs> going to happen. They're going to make those two teams play in the Coliseum at 9 o'clock in the morning. There's going to be like 15 people in the stadium. But mm. 15 million will watch it, and that's all that matters, I guess. What if there's a year where we have to go to the West Coast twice and once is for a 9 a.m. kickoff <laughs> at the Coliseum and the other is for a 1030 Eastern kickoff in oh, Palo Alto? I don't Palo know. Al- yeah. I mean, it's everything's on the table now. This is insanity. I, I, on one hand, I find it exciting. Um, but on the <laughs> other hand, it just seems like this is going to be a, a mess. I don't, I don't know. People searching around trying to figure out which channel. At least, at least uh, I will say with this – new deal i think the people will have a easier time actually finding the channel that the games are on if they're on nbc <laughs> and uh and fox and cbs those are easy channels to, to find right i mean there is a benefit to being on the over the air networks i guess mm-hmm. even uh with cord cutting and all the other factors that are at play this this tells you that how much money is still available for those power networks uh the fact that abc is okay without it is staggering a little bit hard to believe and it's also why we're doing an episode of the podcast daily where we're not talking about actual football in the middle of training camp (laughs) we can't believe it either but we did it and we're going to be back uh, uh, with this show not sure which two of us are going to be there we'll figure that out later uh, for the podcast daily on thursday ohio state has uh, a training camp that will be open for us to watch so there'll be a lot of content coming out of that as well from the three of us Uh, That's Bill Landis. I am Austin Ward. This has been the Podcast Daily. Thanks for joining us. We will see you tomorrow.